Yehova Malak, Olam Olamad, Yehova Malak, Yami Rakes. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upright unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu to the highest and peace be unto the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren in Christ, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory. We need to thoroughly understand that these are the days of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every breath we take is accountable for the wages which we are going to get. As Christ our Lord our God says in Revelation 22, 12, I have the wages of me, or I have the wages of my work with me. And the work what you have done, if it is in not in accord with Ephesians 2.10 before the foundation of the world, we have been made the workmanship in Christ, being the great creation of the Lord, to walk before the foundation of the world that has been prepared for us, the Agathe Sune, good deeds. And the good deeds what Christ our Lord our God teaches to us, with the same love what He loved His Son, God the Father, now He loves us, giving us this great assurance. We are called to look and to understand. The wages are in the hands of the Lord of our God to pay us back, provided when we are building up our house on the foundations being laid by apostles and prophets into one new body, the Church. To this extent, dear brethren, we need not worry, we need not fear the world. What is world? Lord God has entrusted us His deepest riches and desires to be fulfilled through us in this Church age. In comparison to that, what is the world? Why are we still looking the standards of the world to be number one priority? Why are we still bothering to make up our lives to please men rather than Lord God? Why are we still worried, not able to look and declare all the words of the Lord of our God, as he says in Deuteronomy 25, don't keep diverse manners of scales, but do that which is perfect and right. And dear brethren, what Christ our Lord our God has designed for us to do that which is right and perfect in this church age demands nothing but the word of the living Lord our God to be taught and to make you disciples 
in return you grow up to become Kramatiyas and above all you have to be the disciples generating people in this great privileges ever given for us in this church age so dear brethren knowing that we need not fear and worry about the world knowing and understanding that we have something great and unique to perform and realizing that it is lord of a god who shall lead us in his word let's serve him in spirit and in biblical truth let's know the privilege of our life that has been given for us in this church age let's understand the purpose of our calling in this church age and be all the days of our life alert to the praise of his glory so that we shall not toss for every slight of doctrine that comes as a wind and clap our hands and stamp our feet and rejoice in their teachings but rather be available to look after a great diligent search kneeling down in his presence to consider what is right to consider and to look what is perfect and to understand what is the glory where with he has chosen us in eternity past to the praise of his glory and understand that we have been kept alive to listen to his counsel to admonition to reproof to correction and look our life as he demands as per his word and not to daub ourselves with untempered mortar and think this is life and waste our life on this earth lord god the father loves you with the same love what he loved his dear beloved son and in order to prove that love we need to understand the lord whom we are serving and we need to prepare our weapons every day if not in judges chapter 5 when deborah sings her song it will be for a great insult to those people who haven't been prepared to be with the weapons to perform the will of the lord in judges 5 8 we look they choose new gods and this word new meant to say kadash a new thing of fresh gods <laughs> the fresh gods being created by man today as well they are choosing new doctrines new christos they don't want to look go back and look which is right from the world which is right from the beginning the design for the sinful mankind they want to prepare for themselves today something new the beginning of the church age it was daily communion for them so that they could be alert every day to be available to partake in the elements of the lord so that they could be mindful and pure in their thoughts and understand that this man to whom we have been given this great life to serve that all the days of our life for the wages what we are going to acquire every breath you walk it has to be the gospel to them it has to be in very simple words as the word calls for us making them disciples it has to be when you grow up to be grammatias the truth for this people all the days of our life we need to be aware of that wages but the problem with us is what was the things he has designed for us from everlasting to everlasting that we need to be conforming to the image of his dear beloved son we are born to witness the truth living these things apart the world is in search of new gods made by man and as i says the precepts they are taught for them 
These are the precepts according to the fear of men, not according to the fear of Lord God. And in Proverbs we find the word for us to understand. If the precepts have been taught by you, by man rather than Lord God, then never you would understand what is your principal purpose of life. Never. Never you will look what are the standards of Bible doctrine. And this has become a great problem for us in our pulpit today, where men have come to look the doctrines of men by their new gods, what they have risen and forgot to make that we are the only remata declaration of the sword of the spirit, the offensive weapon to pull down every imagination that goes against Bible doctrine by wearing the entire panoply of my Christ. Beginning with the lion's grit with truth and then the breastplate of righteousness and then making your feet to have the gospel of peace and to take the large shield of faith, the very large shield of faith. And from there on, we learn the helmet of salvation. If this is the entire panoply of my Christ, wherewith we war in this intensified stage of the angelic conflict, not with flesh and blood, but with the unseen forces, we should be, as per the terms of Bible doctrine as he demanded in us to be the weapons of his warfare. Therefore Apostle Paul tells we are soldiers fit for master's use and we have over here a great battle going on the unseen angelic conflict you are a part into it. After believing in Christ growing up in grace you are a part into it. You have a very, very great burden, dear brethren. Just don't think salvation is free and you can get along with the terms. Your cost of discipleship is greater. In Mark 9, we have few words. We shall take that after this prayer. And what Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has prepared and kept for us in today's day, we shall take it. In the privacy of your priesthood given to you the function to confess your sins through rebound. 1 John 1 9 is not a license to sin. It is a license to serve unto the Lord our God in spirit and in biblical truth. Without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot truly understand what is the will of Lord God the Father. Thus we have been constantly mandated to be in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this church age. Because we cannot waste our time, but rather we have been mandated to put to mark what are the words to be every day in salt, in fire, every sacrifice, insulted with salt. So that if the salt lose its saltness, the Greek word analos, or the word called as insipid, tasteless, then what is it used for? It is used for nothing, he says, even in Matthew. And representing have salt in yourselves, have peace one with another. The salt represents wisdom and grace exhibited in your every word to teach to you the prudence to make you to understand we have something great to live by becoming the light and salt of this world to make up our treasures in the heaven not on this earth because our rewards our wages are in the hands of the lord you are a laborer for christ on this earth the day when you reach your accountability towards Lord God's consciousness, you believe in Christ by faith alone, the, the same principle in Habakkuk 2 4, Galatians 3 as well. Faith alone in Christ alone. Because those who walk by faith, 
they have the essence of character called as Amat, the truth. Because they know Lord God is faithful. He will be the same. It is we who change, we are faithless. And the one who walks in the character of just, his everyday walk, he knows that his cares are in the hands of the Lord. And he has only one burden, to carry his cross and follow my Christ and become his disciple. And to be the salt of this earth and to have peace with one another. And to know the very purpose why we have been kept alive. That is to make disciples when you have grown up to be Kramatiyas in Christ. This is not a new thing. It is what the Bible consistently says from the time of Moses. He gave them long back these instructions. Even in Deuteronomy 27, 8 he says, Write all the words, not just read, write. He says the word katab, describe them, inscribe them, prescribe them, subscribe them to the truth. You have to write them, heaving down your stones. Therefore the psalmist in Psalm 119, verse number 12, he says, Lord, before thee I kneel down in thy presence. Teach me the things that are necessary, that are abiding for us to survive on this earth. If not how we could be perfect, if not how we could be correct, if not how we could say we lived a life of truth. Your new gods, in representing to you new doctrines, which are not from the exegesis of the word of the Lord of a God in the completed canon of scripture of 66 books, not being built upon the foundations of apostles and prophets, your new doctrine will never make you to understand that you need to learn by becoming a Mantano plus Didasco teacher, from a Didasco teacher, the very disciple word. And then you need to proclaim through your mouth all the judgments of Lord God, all the judgments. And this is what many people are not able to look. When you have to season with salt, your every word, he says in Colossians 4, 6, it is a mixture of wisdom and grace because we receive it by grace. Even Apostle Paul and Barnabas received their work by grace to the heathen, and the pillars there they were, they said, James, that time when they met. He says, we received this communion or fellowship because of his grace, and the grace of his communion which has been bestowed upon us. He goes on to teach for us. We went for the heathen, me and Barnabas, and for the circumcision, there were James, Peter, and the other ones. So anything it is we receive by grace. And that what we receive by grace, we need to be in grace, the wages as well, to take. And that's what right from our saving grace, till to the life we die, dying grace, it is purely His grace for His work on this earth. We cannot come and say, Lord, do this for me. Lord has already done and kept for you everything. He has given for you his Nagad revolution. He has declared for us the end from the beginning. He has made very plain in the 66 books what we are, and we have to build our foundations upon that one chief cornerstone known by Christ being taught according to the prophets as well as apostles and perform the will of Lord God the Father alone. And nothing else than that matters for us because he is the first, as we read in Colossians 1. Every principle, every prince or every authority have been made to be subjected under him, he says. And if Christ be for us, who will be against us? And without Christ, we are nothing, says the word. We are nothing without Christ, my Lord. In his humanity, when he came in the resurrection body, in his appearance, he teaches to us in his mystery epistles in Colossians 1. He is the invisible from the firstborn. And then the qualities of his praise, what we are due unto him. If we would know the pattern is the same, we would not be 
the way how we are worshipping the Lord and thinking that we are worshipping the Lord in spirit and in truth but you are still out of the context from the original languages of the scriptures. Therefore it says in verse number 15 of Colossians 1, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him, that is through him, were all things created, the things that are in the heaven, the things that are in the earth, the things that are visible and invisible, whether they be thronas, dominions, or principalities, or powers. Either of these categories, you will be stuck up on this earth to say that you don't have the weapons of the Lord God in your hands. The weapon is nothing but the remata declaration of Bible doctrine, the sword of the Spirit, the word of the Lord. Because of your thronas, what you think in your life, because of your principalities, what you think in your life is number one priority rather than the word. Because of your dominions, what you think in your life. Because of your powers, what you think in your life, they are hindering you. You are subjecting yourselves to look the details of life and forget the great work of my Christ that has been given for us in this church age. And the psalmist gives for us a great example in his pilgrimage trip of Psalm 119. And he says, Lord, I have a great pleasure in the testimonies as I have a pleasure in the riches. And what are his testimonies? What he has given for us. Like Christ, we can conform to his image. And we have been prayed by Christ himself that we shall be keeping his word. Or we are the people who have kept his word. And you want to still search new gods. <laughs> Dear brethren, the greatest enemy for you or the unholy trio, number one in that is your own self, your flesh. And then comes the world, powered by the world, powered to the world, being backed up by Satan. Because it knows very well what is its fate. It doesn't want you to have salt. Your every word, what you talk, it doesn't want you to be in salt, being mixed with grace. It doesn't want. It is so much happy in teaching to you lies. It is very much happy in inculcating to you lies. It is not even entrusted. It is worried about those men who are graduating in the word of the Lord of a God so that it can make an attack as it made earlier. Not to get this Bible into our hands. If ever you got the Bible, let it be sealed so that it, it has to be as if you are not able to read that. The translations I have given for us a basic foundation so that you can build up your basic fundamentals and blocks and go back and read in the original language of the scriptures. That's what the translations have done for us. But if you think the translations itself is your life, then you are sealed out. Like the way what we read in Isaiah, it was been given to the learned and he said it has been sealed. It has been given to the unlearned. He says, I cannot read it. So is your life now. It has been sealed from the original language of the scriptures and you are just thinking your mind to have your reasonings based upon your translations and you are not having a worthy look of the call wherewith Lord God has called us to walk worthy of his calling. Imitating Christ as dear beloved children following the great Lord of a God. What details you have? Doesn't he say for us in Romans 8, 37 through 39? Whatever the principalities, the powers, the rulers, the authorities, whatever they may think they are against you, nothing can separate you from the love of Lord God. And in John 15, our Lord our God teaches to us in verse number 10, I have loved you with the same love what I have loved my son. Do you know what is the power of that verse? Do you know what is a wonderful verse is that for us? It has a lot of meaning for us. It gives a great inspiration for us to know and to prove to Lord God the Father, though our love is as cold as moon, and his love is as hot as sun. Yet we need to have confidence in that, that he loves us because we are keeping his word, performing his truth. And yet we are rejecting the word of the Lord of our God as never before, though we have been given the completed can of scripture. And yet these people are not able to look. 
What a great love, Lord God the Father is loving us. Dear brethren, we need to understand if you don't really walk by getting rid of from the bite of a snake which is always leading you into lies and entangling you in the terms of your translations, if you don't get rid of that, you are not the light of this world. You have to come back. How many days more you have to come back? The life that has been given for us is having a lot of meaning. Because the Lord of a God whom he serve, he alone is omnipotent. He is the only one who reigns forever. It is he who has called us to do his work faithfully. It is he who has given for us this great privilege and made us to be available to the praise of his glory without any excuse, without any reasons. As many people think that we cannot continue in his love because we cannot prove him that we are trustworthy. And the reason is that you haven't known what the Lord God demands, but you have made for yourselves new gods. You have made up your life for something new, the fresh one which did not exist. Even in the church age, the pastors have come up something new gods for them. That's like the reverence, reverence and doctorates, which is not there. The Bible talks about as we can read, as a pastor teacher, that is the bona fide gift, legitimate gift from Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the church age. And the people are thinking, Ravadas will do. That's a new God. This is simple an illustration. Even when you can go back and look, you will find women shall never be preachers for you to have authority over you in the pulpits. And yet, you're finding new gods in your pulpits where the woman has become a bishop to you. And these are strange things. These are not at all in the Bible. In fact, indeed, the Bible says, everyday communion with Lord God to preach his gospel, therefore break his bread. Eucharist, you can do that in your own. When you assemble in the church, the point is different for you to have. But every day, continuing in prayer and in breaking off of the bread will remind you that you have to preach the gospel in your holy manner walk of life. But today they have come weekly ones, in some churches monthly ones, and in some churches yearly ones. That's a new thing. This, is the, this did not exist earlier. On the other hand, Zafnia 3 5 says, Without fail, he comes to expound his attributes for us every day and now the world has come weekly ones proverbs 8 34 through 36 every day come and learn the word of the lord of a god blessed are the people who would love to listen to the discourse of bible doctrine every day and yet the world is looking and searching new doctrine freshly coming up Therefore, Apostle Paul, long back in 2 Timothy, he writes a great caution of warning for us. He teaches to us, dear brethren, preach the word, Kerusothon Lagan. The times are going to come, the perilous times where the people will not endure sound Bible doctrine. They don't want to have sound Bible doctrine in their pulpits. They will gather up for themselves those itching ear pastors. Or teachers who would love to teach them according to their itching ears what they demand and long back Nahum says in chapter 3 in verse number 1 this is a bloodshed city or a bloody city filled with lies deceptions and what a great pain it would be for Lord God the Father in expressing that anthropopathism, crying out, Woe unto you! 
What a great grief and a pain it would be for Lord God the Father when he is writing those words for us. And yet we in the present Christendom are not worried what is this word war. Because they are just thinking. It will be one form of interjection but they never understand it's a passionate cry of grief. It's a passionate cry of despair. And this we read anthropopathism and he says it is full of lies Malay being filled it has been meant to say for us that in abundance and what is that abundance it has it has lies in it kakash and what is that lies deception new gods are deception to you new doctrines are deceptions to you New pastor teachers who do not know exegesis are deceptions to you. The theological colleges which have come recently, in a sense, from last around 30, 40 years back, or still more we can go, around 50 years back, they are nothing but deception to you. They are not teaching any longer importance of daily exegeting the word. They're emphasizing for you daily going out to the streets and talking to you, sharing the word. They are not understanding that they need to make disciples, provided when they know that the church is the university and the pastor teacher is the dean and every believer is a professor to the angel. They're not understanding these terms any longer. They have come up to say, come unto us, we will train you for one month and we will make you pastor. If you're not able to come for one year, pay your money, you can have your ordination and you will become a pastor. We will give you CTH, Certificate in Theology, then we will develop you for DTH, Diploma in Theology. But no Neology, never. But the Word of the Lord of God teaches Barak, Barak. In Psalm 119, in verse number 12, the word Barak. I kneel down before thee, O Lord, and I will praise thee. Why kneeling down is so much important. All the teachings under this sun cannot give you those, said the Irish preacher to H.A. Ironside. All these teachings cannot qualify you. Neither there is no theological college in this world established that can teach you these things. And he said, when I went to the open field, upon my knees what I was learning, it is the one who has written the Bible, not by flesh and blood, but by the Spirit of the Lord. He came to teach me these things and I have pronounced it for you. So that I need to give an account of every word exactly and accurately as a software to Christ. And really what a days they are in the past. The same days because the Lord God, the Holy Spirit is the same, it cannot change. It is the same, it cannot change. The days what they were, the days what they are, the days what will be in the future till the rapture of the church. These are the days of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and it requires what the Bible doctrine demands. And he says in Psalm 119 in verse number 12, Barak, kneel down. Why? Nahum 2.10 teaches to us, if we don't kneel down, we don't have strength in our heart. When we don't have strength in our heart, our soul and spirit is hollow. That's why we don't have strength in our heart. It's not what you appear outward, it's what, what you think inward. Therefore, Romans 12.1-3 teaches to us, renovate the standards of your thinking. Therefore, you know, man, he says, I hid like a treasure, hidden treasure in me, in my heart. And then furthermore, he goes to continue for us. Our heart melts if you don't have that word. Therefore, your knees will tremble. It is not having strength. Because if your knees are not bowing down before the presence of Lord God the Father, your lions will not have the truth, the strength. Apostle Paul goes to preach for us. As the Jewish idiom goes, what are those lions we need to learn? And maybe we have talked about that long back. It's nothing but the strength for your sperm to fertilize that egg. 
That's what the Jewish idiom is all about. Now Apostle Paul says, the strength for your lions is the word of the Lord of our God so that you could take this entire panoply of my Christ and wearing upon this great sword of the spirit, which is nothing but the offensive weapon, you can fight the war of the Lord. But here in Judges 5.8 we find new gods have come up. They went along to new gods. What happened? We shall look that after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the pallid wonders of the word of the Lord, our God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we are going to share these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit and little and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, so with Lord. Amen. When the new gods came, she says, Deborah in her song, in Judges chapter 5, in verse number 8. They chose Bakar, they elected, they decided, <laughs> This is what first happens, first your decision. If you are having indecision, that leads to doubt and that leads to fear. If you are having your decision to cast all your cares upon the Lord God because He careth for you, you don't have any fear because you have decided now because it is the Lord God who shall take care for us. And therefore we read even in Proverbs chapter 15, when we make up our minds to have the discipline of the Lord God every day with proper correction, doctrinal teaching and reproof and instruction in righteousness for Christ, a training in righteousness for Christ, we shall not be giving our life to reprobates. And in the world you will find every nick and corner reprobates. Therefore reprobates elect reprobates. If they're truly from the Lord God, if they understand why their birth is, if they understand why they're running the churches, if they would come back and look, what is the purpose of my Christ in this church age, very specifically to make disciples of all the nations, then they wouldn't be reprobates. They would seek and search and diligently call unto the Lord of our God, as Jeremiah 33 says. He shall show you secret and hidden things, even the things that you know not. But in Luke 6, he says, you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do the things what I say unto you. Therefore, in his privilege over here for us, he says, they are choosing, they are electing themselves, those new gods, which are no gods at all. In the manner, there is no doctrine apart from making you disciples, and you have to grow up to become grammatias, and in return, you need to make, not just preach the gospel to unbelievers, but make them disciples when they believe in Christ, because that's the power of his word. And those who don't believe, let them to their fate but have you blow the trumpet if they don't believe in my Christ leave them to their fate our duty is to just give them the information if at all with the peace that you're enjoying the life on this earth if at all you're exhibiting the living exhibition of my Christ in your life if at all you're walking through a holy manner walk of life if you're having to show forth to them what great peace you have what great love and care and affection you have at least unbelievers at least would try to come and they would know by your holy manner walk of life by the peace that you have by the life that you're sharing that what a true life these people they're exhibiting what a true life they're showing showing as if they are heavenly citizens. If Stephen was been recorded in Acts chapter 6 that his face was like the face of an angel, then how much more today Christian believers ought to be? When your face is shining like an angel, certainly people will come to ask, what is that? But Christ of Lord of our God says now, not just like an angel, it is Lord God, the Trinity indwelling in you. You need to conform to the image of his dear beloved son and you should be constantly worried about one thing all the days of your life. Father, have I spoken about your judgments? Does my mouth talk about thy judgments? Does my lips speak about and count about very accurately through exegesis and exactly what the word of the Lord of our God is all about? Have you ever thought about that? Therefore, in Deuteronomy chapter 25, we have two great words. Beginning with verse number 14, he says, You shall not have diverse scales or measures, but you shall have before the Lord of a God that which is perfect and just. And we need to look the word, what is perfect. Because we don't want to look what the translation perfect would mean for you in your English. But in the Hebrew, the word perfect meant to say shalem. And the word for us, it teaches the importance that it comes from the word to meant to say shalom. And it is nothing but to be sound and safe and to be whole and to keep safe and to have a harmony relationship with Lord God living every day in your life. 
Therefore, you have to meet the obligations to be every day of your life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the word shalem meant to say for us, it means complete, it means whole, it means perfect. Are we looking up our life in these terms? Or are we still searching lies as a refuge for us? We need to come back to the reality, dear brethren, the sooner the better. The reality to be perfect and complete is exegesis. Every word of the Lord of a God is true. Therefore, the psalmist says, I count every word of you as a sofer, that is, as a scribe, to write the word accurately and exactly, and I shall not even let go what is that iota and carrera, saith my Lord. Even a jot or a tittle, it shall not let go. I want to completely fulfill it. I want to completely execute it. And we have been entrusted with such great riches of Lord God to fulfill his desire through our lives on this earth. We have been entrusted with such great privilege. But we have to prove that we are loving Lord God. An example of Peter, we read John chapter 21. He said, Lord, I feel us love you. In John 15, 9, he says, I love you, therefore, with the same love, that's agape, agape, and continue in my love, agape. What is that? What Christ, our Lord, our God, was being demanded by Lord God, the Father in heaven, on this flesh, same way he's demanding you now to be in the flesh. And he says, continue, abide in that love, continue in that demands of the word of the Lord, our God. But Peter says, Lord, I have more than that agape love, I have philos love. Then prove your love. Therefore, in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, he teaches to us, if anyone doesn't love my Christ, let him be called as anathema, the cursed ones. Do you know what are these things, dear brother? We have been called to prove like Peter. Therefore, he says, what is the principle as a pastor teacher? First feed, and then tend, and then feed. We don't have any other work to feed. Our duty is to be like Numbers 153, to be in the circuit of the tabernacle of testimony, all the way to be round about. That's what all the way to understand that we are in the temple service of the Lord God. What is the temple service? Now every believer is a temple. And what is your service? Because you're called to have your wages to be answered back to the Lord because he has your rewards in his hand, your wages in his hand, which was, even that also says wages of me. That's very specific over there, wages of me. He doesn't say wages of you. He says wages of me. By that he meant to say what? We have been predestined according to the word of the Lord of a God in Ephesians 2.10 before the foundation of the world to walk in these good works. Agatha's deeds. We have to walk in that, he says. And more essentially, he says, I have my rewards. Therefore, in Matthew 7 as well as in Luke 6, we read, you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things what I say to you, then how you can get your reward? You think your reward? Your reward is nothing but wood and stubble. My rewards are nothing but gold, silver, and precious stones, he says. Therefore, in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, he teaches a great lesson for us, workers of iniquity, I know not who you are. Though you may think, Lord, I did thy duty, he says in Revelation 22, 12, the rewards of me according to the works, by that we meant to say what we are predestined in the past to walk in those works as being Lord's habitable place on this earth, a workmanship created for him, for him, for him. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, he teaches to us, we are not of our own, we have been bought up with a great price, therefore glorify the Lord of our God. We are not having any authority over our flesh, that's what he meant to say. And what is that work he calls? Prepare your weapons for Lord's battle. Prove that you are grown up as scribes. Prove that you are really worthy enough that you are able to make disciples. Show forth the witness that you have made disciples. Show forth your spiritual children. Bring forth your spiritual grandchildren through them. That's the rewards. That's the works, what you are able to do. And how? It calls for us to show forth the pleasure of His great glory bestowed upon us. We are really enjoying His grace by living a holy manner walk of life. And that's what we need to know. Yesterday we were talking that. What Adam called, Lord God now reveals to us the vocabulary of Adam. If he called elephant an elephant, a tiger a tiger, a lion a lion, he is teaching to us in those terms. And whatever tree he called, the olive tree, the fir tree, 
Even the world, if they would search in the medicine for the leaves, they cannot understand what mannerism of trees Lord God has planted and kept for us so that he could say in the millennium he's going to use these leaves for our health. That's what he says in Ezekiel or in Isaiah. We read that. Even these people can't understand what it is. So what Adam named, he's talking to us in those terms. Now what last Adam kept and named for every work of, every work of life of ours on this earth, that which could be called as complete, that which could be called as the right measure, that which could be called as peaceful and having great and true obedience with Lord God. He has prepared through his last Adam. And he has given for us that revolution through Lord God the Holy Spirit in his completed canon of scripture and we need to walk in those terms we need to talk in those terms we cannot have our own terms therefore he says for us that which is perfect and complete that you need to do are you complete without exegesis you cannot be because exegesis is the origin for theology and theology is the origin for your life on this earth you cannot say you're perfectly following the standards of Bible doctrine. Thus you're searching what? You're choosing what? You're choosing new gods. And what does these new gods do for them? They will make you weaponless. And Deborah, a woman, asks a question to those people. And yet, though we have now in the completed account of scripture, and yet in the present technology we have the East Ward, My Ward, put by Rick Mayers and other people so that it could be a great help for us like around the globe who are really in search of the truth, in search of the, new, in search of the original language of the scriptures so that we could download them and understand them and examine every word. So we need to understand that which is perfect shalem, that which is right, that which is correct, that which is demanded by the Lord God, that which is always fair. If it is fair for us to be as John 1.18 exegiomai, then any other thing apart from that, which are false doctrines, which are false gods, which have come up newly for you, they cannot be matched, they cannot be accepted, they cannot be taken into Lord's work. When you have been there, good, he says, you will be sadak, you will be called as righteous. You will be righteous morally, you will be righteous in your straightforwardness, you will be, more, you will be ethically also right, so that what ought to be, you will perform. But the problem is when you have not searched what is perfect, as Deuteronomy 25, 15 says, you cannot be just. You may think you are just. You may think you are pure. Because in fact, indeed, when we look into the life of these pastor teachers, we look, even the pastors, they are still into the lustful patterns of the old sin nature and they count that they are pure and right. They are not even physically pure, morally pure, ethically pure. How they could be spiritually pure, how they could meet the standards of Bible doctrine, the present Christendom. If they were really spiritually pure, then they would make every day to teach the word of the Lord of God as number one priority and make disciples of all the nations. That's the key, that's the burden. And that's what in the present Christendom people have lost. They're not worrying why they're assembling in the church. They're not even concerned why they have been kept alive. They're not even noticing what is the grace of the Lord of our God that has been bestowed upon us day by day, though we are wretched sinners. They think they are born for the parents. They think they are born for the wife. They think they are born for the children and they die. The cycle of life. <laughs> from birth to growth. From growth to the responsibility. Getting married now because the father says, he is to the marriage age, let him marry, and then he has two or three children again. And again he says, still I could settle the children's life, working now for the children. I don't deny marriage is not needed. As in 1 Corinthians 7 teaches to us, the one who is unmarried will love to please the Lord, the one who is married will, please, will love to please his spouse. That's very simple logic, dear brethren. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, blessed if you are, if you can control, don't get married. He says, be like me. Why? Because time is short. If not, you will entangle yourself into the details of life. If not, you will produce for yourself wood and sable rather than gold, silver and precious stones. 
You will waste up your entire life and you cannot even be morally, ethically, physically pure to the Lord. Why? Because your mind will go on to impress the details of life. Your wife and then your children and then furthermore your great-grandchildren you will have. And you will say, I need to prepare some wealth for them. And you run, living apart the word of the Lord of a God, which is your only treasure on this earth. Doesn't the Lord say for us in Matthew 6, in verse number 21, Where's your treasure? There's your heart. That's very simple logic. Which many people, if they would understand it long back, they would turn their heart to be to the Lord. They would understand how great of our heart are not melting it would be for them. Their soul and spirit is backing them up, the, un the invisible man. They are backing him up, the inner man. And the heart would always think like the way how Christ of Lord of God shows forth his example. The flesh may perish, but his word that was there in his mind, he says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. If you don't have the doctrine in your soul and spirit, your heart melts. When your heart melts, your knees are weakened. And when your knees are weakened, you are absolutely having no strength in your lions. When there is no strength in your lions, your face looks pale and blackened, he says. And when your heart is not right, what can you do to the Lord? The pastors are entering now. When the hearts are not right to the word of the Lord of God, what can you do? You cannot do anything. You would think you are really doing great things, but no. You are not even worthy to be counted. And that's how the world is running today, not even able to meet the ethical standards, what they ought to be. And then, the decisions which have been made by a judge are to be made according to the truth and without partiality. The Lord God, what is going to judge you tomorrow, not able to have the meeting of His word on this earth. He is going to judge, not partially, but in accord with truth, no matter whatever they may be. So it meant to say it's an unsfavoring adherence to the standards of fairness of righteous conduct which comes from a new heart to obey the principles of Bible doctrine. And the person who possesses such activity like an unsfavoring adherence to the standard of fairness which have been demanded, it's like a conduct for him, which comes every day from this new man or a new heart. The new man is nothing but tesalatia. Now the new heart is nothing but circulating Bible doctrine because now your new heart has been backed up by the soul and the spirit which is teaching to you the truth. This is the inner man. So when you're having your inner man with the word of the Lord of a God, not hollow, but filled with the word of the Lord, your new heart will circulate Bible doctrine. It will call your knees to burden before the Lord because who can stand before his presence? It will call you to make an account for your life at least once, kneel down and write the word of the Lord. That's what Deuteronomy 27, 8 says. It will call to your mind your alliance to be strengthened when you kneel down. And when your lions have been there in the word of the Lord of a God, your face will shine bright. And that's what we need to look. The good doctrine will give great strength in Psalms 15, in Proverbs chapter 15, in verse number 30, not Psalms. The good report, that's what it says for us. But in the Hebrew, it has been used even also for good doctrine, good doctrine, sound doctrine. The greater you choose new doctrines rather than what Christ our Lord of our God has established for us, the principled rule for this mankind, you cannot have good report. You will have only bad doctrine. And that bad doctrine will not lubricate or will not prosper your bones. And therefore he says, the Lord God is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. You need to know how important it is. That Lord God calls us righteous to prove that which is right and perfect, that which is his standards to meet in those terms. Therefore he says, the here that here are the reproof of life abideth among the wise, or the one who is having a ear to listen, what is the reproof correction, then those lives are lodging in the wisdom ones. That is what the fear of the Lord he says, fear of Yahweh is the discipline for wisdom. And then furthermore he says, but if you reject, 
if you let loose, if you call it as a refuse, not the right instructions, then the one who is rejecting the Musar, that is nothing but 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, which has been used for discipline, for correction, for instructions, then he gives your soul to the reprobates. And that's the problem in us. Reprobate pastor teachers are more in our pulpits. Reprobate revenues are more in our pulpits. Your inner man doesn't have strength. He doesn't talk about your outward flesh. He says, the one who's rejecting admonition, the one who's rejecting discipline, the one who's rejecting reproof, correction, instruction of the Lord, he is becoming a reprobate in his soul. The page. But the one who's listening correction or chastisement or discipline, he is gathering or acquiring or collecting Understanding is the word, not the heart. It has been translated as heart, but it is not the heart. Sorry, it has been translated as understanding, but it has to be the word heart. He is what? He is gaining his strength in his heart. If you listen to correction, you are taking and acquiring your heart to be founded upon Bible doctrine. You are taking your heart to be well established in the word of truth. Because the fear of the Lord, Yare 3373, is the discipline of wisdom, and to the face it is glory. It's a discipline of wisdom, and to the face it is glory. Even in the book of Ezekiel, we read the millennium description of the temple, the glory of the Lord of a God will lighten them. In fact, indeed, in this church age, Lord God the Father has given us that glory to be lightening to this people. To show forth to them what we are in this church age. To make them to understand when we are having the fear of Yahweh, which is the origin for the discipline, we would be the people to make them know what is that glory. But the problem is the people have not understood what is that fear of the Lord. And therefore, dear brethren, the word the fear, 3374, Yare, which is origin from 3373, it meant to say reverence, morally reverence, what we need to pay. The fear of the Lord is instruction or musa, or discipline or chastening, or correction for wisdom. Before honor and before us, he says, Pani im in the face, there is glory, kabod, and which is nothing but humility in the gentleness of we call to be in this church age, the great meek, as even the word meek doesn't meet that, as we read in one of the Greek texts. But it meant to say, great gentleness to the Lord's will. And yet what is happening today in our pulpits? Choosing new gods. The people of the church age have lost what is the old way of life, the path of life, not the old sin nature, but the new man who has to walk in the precepts and judgments or the coke, what we read, the prescribed demands necessary for us to live a life on this earth. He has forgot to look into that. He has forgot to judge into that. He has forgot to understand that. And has become what? He has become in search of vain, rogue things. He is just wasting his life like a moron. Because he is choosing to himself new gods. But he hasn't come to look what is the fear of the Lord. He hasn't come to understand. If he goes through the proper discipline, he is being counted among the wisdom men. And he will have an habitation of great correction for him in his chastisement and he will be free from the reprobates. If you don't wake up, you are still in the reprobate realm. Your life that you have been given in grace, when you go back home, he says, my wages, my wages. He doesn't say your wages, what you labored to me. No, he says, what I caused you to labor through me. For the works, for the foundation of the world, before it could come to existence, the good works, what I have designed, you need to walk in them. Therefore, he says, it is my wages. Therefore, he says, for us to be in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath of our life. Therefore, he says, if ever you live in the Spirit, you also walk in the Spirit. If ever you walk in the Spirit, he says, you march in the Spirit. And therefore, he says, in 
Psalms 37 verse 23 and following the steps of a good man or a marching man are been ordered or been given as a marching order from the Lord the top the word is that which is agreeable the sight of the Lord he says these things have been from my end Therefore, very specifically, we find in Revelation 22, 12, my wages, he says. And I shall give you according to your works. There will be great men standing before us when we look their works to Christ. Like the way who are beheaded for the word of the Lord. To make this Bible in our languages, how many people left their life? In fact, indeed, they were once again put back to life and they, they were once again, though they were dead and buried, like William Wycliffe and other persons, they brought him up in the center of the place, put firewood, and they burnt him off so that no one should translate this Bible. This will be the great works for them. Like the way how William Carey, in spite of all the pains he has gone through, doing the work of the Lord of God, because they live, they live for Christ. That's a living exhibition of their life. Like the way how Tregilius was, the man who went along to write the Bible, when he was being given only to look into it, he came back again, he same depicted the same things and writing a copy and keeping for us. These are the great works. Not the works that you got married, not the works you have children, not the works you have great-grandchildren and prove that these are the works. No, even dogs also have the children. Even animals also reproduce, that's what I meant to say. That's not your work. Your work is to carry your cross and follow my Christ and become the disciple of the word of the Lord of our God. And when you have your discipleship program trained up, as Matthew 13 teaches to us in verse number 52, as a disciple you join there and you grow up to become a grammatias, a New Testament grammatias, a New Testament scribe. And when you grow up there, you have in the details of life as Lord God wills to give you children or not when you get married. Or if having a gift of celibacy, go through that and enjoy. If not, you wait upon the Lord to give you children. Because godly seed has to be given, he says in Malachi 2.15. The residue of the breath that has been left over. And that godly children which have been given to you. They have to be given once again back to the Lord. In the meantime, no children, be happy. Be happy in Christ and look the way how these great men dedicated their lives. And what is your work you're performing? Be happy and come out. And perform to do the will of Lord God the Father rather than spending your time to the family. That's what Abraham did when he had his promised son Isaac. At Lord God wants to put him to test now. He puts him to test. And he teaches him a lesson. You shall not love anything more than me. If you love anything more than your life, he says, you are not worth for me to be a disciple. How many illustrations we find in the Bible and that why we are still negligent. Because you are choosing new gods. That's why you haven't looked what is the world terms for us right from John 1 18 it's exegeomai right from the time of Leviticus or Deuteronomy we find instructions for the priest to Nagath to execute and to teach them and why and what is the process by the process called as Lamad Montano plus Didascal that's right from the beginning it doesn't come newly. It has been right from the beginning. Newly you have come weekly once to the church. Newly you have come to organize yourself three days of prayer meetings and say as if you can get energized instantly and transform from the pages of Bible into your soul the written information. It's not possible, dear brethren. The procedure what Christ our Lord of our God set forth for the sinful mankind on this earth is to daily renovate the standards of your thinking. Though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed day by day. And you have to do by renewing day by day the works of the Lord. By destroying the works of the devil. And yet, you don't want to look what are your weapons in my Christ. You don't want to consider the spiritual warfare. And you want to choose new gods. Choose new gods. And you want to find your life in the new doctrines, which is no way concerned in the Bible. The 
Bible knows only one principle, make Lamad. The Bible calls to make only disciples when you grow up as grammatias. The Bible knows only one thing, it could call you to understand. If we are not making disciples, we will not get our wages because we are not doing the work of my Christ. You may think you are secured, you are just being saved, that's it. You are not worthy, you are not grown up. And you will make up your own children to also walk in those terms. Because what you know you think is better, you will teach to your children. If you do not know what is better from the Lord's mind, then how you could cho choose or teach your children for Lord's glory? You cannot. You will also make up your children to say, I at least haven't been educated. I am an illiterate man. Let me go and make my children to be doctors. That's what your goal is, isn't it? You want to make your children to become engineers. I don't deny. Let them have. But far above than that, you need to look. What is the knowledge of my Christ? If you don't teach him Christ, if you don't make him to be the disciple of my Christ, though he may earn millions of rupees in one day, it will be counted as sheer rot, fit for nothing, worth for nothing. Because doesn't the word say, all the money put together in this world cannot save one soul. And all the money cannot give you that richness together when he says in Proverbs 4, before the knowledge of Bible doctrine, to be even to the dust of the scales, to be equally balanced to say, even to the dust, all the treasures of this world, riches of this world, details of this world, honor, glory, fame of this world, if you put in one weighing scale, on the other weighing scale of the balance one, if you have the old one it is for the, for the things Pertaining to isagogical background, we are talking. It was like a scale when they have, when they hold in their hand, they will be having two things: one on the left, one on the other. For example, if you want to take one kg of weight, they would keep one kg of stone on one plate, which is to the left, and on to the right, they would pour the material which could balance them, and they say, yes, this is equivalent to one kg of weight. Whatever material you may take, whether it may be vegetables or some other things. Okay, in the same manner of this old concept of Proverbs eight, the Proverbs four. Lord God the Father through Solomon, he writes the wisdom words to learn in our life. He teaches to us. Though you may put the entire world riches together on one end, and you may say, this is my life, this is my pleasure, this is everything. <laughs> Compared to the pleasure, what you get from this world. When you put on the other side, even the dust of the scales of knowledge of Bible doctrine, this entire riches and the pleasures, what you think you can have, is not worth enough for the scales. Because the dust of the scales of knowledge of Bible doctrine is much more weighter. It, it, it outweighs them. And therefore the preacher, the Kolahat, goes on to preach for us. The wicked think the time is far away for the judgment. Therefore they are spending their life. In the way, choosing new gods. Dear brethren, in Ecclesiastes 8.11 he says, Sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil, ra'a, which is not agreeable to the will of God the Father. Why? Because the sentence, the things pertaining to decree, is not executed are designed or fashioned speedily. <laughs> Therefore, one of the quality of Sadak, which is right and just, we read there, that till they could meet to one level of sin, Lord God will wait. And when they would reach to that standards, then he's going to take action. Even in the present Christendom, look upon your life. Do you have any sickness, any wickedness in your heart? Then come back and look, you have chosen new gods. And then he says, when they choose new gods, then was war in the gates, Lacan, that is, the battle. And then, was there a shield or spear seen among forty thousands of Israel? Can we find today the people who are really worth enough to the praise of his glory in Christ? given the time to you.
to prepare disciples in the Lord's glory. How many of them you have made? War has been there, he says. The battle has been there, but there were no spears. There was no spear seen among the 40,000 of Israelites. And this Deborah cries out. Today, there are millions of people, trillions of people, billions of people who have believed in my Christ. And in the parallel edition, what we're going through in this life that we're breathing on this earth, maybe the life cycle for these people may be 90 or 100 to the most. If this 90 or 100 years of people, if you would compare back, who are surviving till date, from the day one of their birth till to 90 or 100 or whichever greater age they're surviving and they're Christians, can they be found as we call any spear. Can they be people who have grown up to become Lord's weapon? And that's what she says. They have choose new gods. They're choosing new doctrines. And there were no weapons seen among the children of Israel or 40,000 people of Israelites. And today it will be no weapons among this entire Christendom, apart from very few whom we can count upon our fingers. We are really doing the will of Lord God the Father. Therefore, dear brethren, be aware, straight is the gate, narrow, straight gate it is. Few people would walk. All would love to think they can walk. But only few can walk, taking the cross every day. Can you be in that figure of fear? Many are called and few are chosen. Can you be in that figure? Few who are chosen. Among 40,000 of Israelites, what it was, there was no weapons, she says. Not even one. 40,000 men. Not even one. If the same question arises today for us, how many disciples have you made? Have you been grammatias? Is there any one disciple believing Matthew 28, 18 through 20 and performing in your church? Can you be found any one that you need to answer yourself? Because today also it is the same day, a hard departure from God, an inroad of bitter foes or enemies. And what is the preparedness for such an inroad? Are there no weapons of war, no furnishings from the armory of divine truth? Have you put on the complete armor of Lord God? The word of Lord God is our arsenal, and from it alone can we obtain our weapons. What tremendous responsibilities have those who occupy a place of prominence and influence among the saints of Lord God. How utterly Solomon it is to contemplate the influence for good or bad that people of gift have. No one should cover such a place as being a place of peace and ease, for it means work, prayer, responsibility, firmness and love. If these are absent, such an one will lead the people of God into astray. The same thing what Acts 6, 4 through 7, when they came along a dispute for them to serve the tables or to serve the Lord God, they said, no, we are here to serve the Lord God. We would continually give ourselves to fasting and to prayer and to anagonisco the word of the Lord. That's what they said. If the pastor teacher gift what you're going to occupy in your pulpits, if you don't have that burden, you are leading astray the people of Lord God. And Lord God's heart is toward those leaders who willingly offer themselves to serve the saints, like those of Deborah's day, with only unselfish motives. Today, why you come to the church? We know that. Just for some pieces of bread, for a handful of barley, that's why. You come only for these things, but not to the truth. And then how many are there today who are utterly indifferent to the inroads of the mighty forces of evil among the Lord's people? Alas, our interests are more important to us than God's. <laughs> you and I will never be worth anything to the Lord God unless we put aside self and its concerns and put Lord God interests first. You have to be the weapon to the Lord. If not, your motives are not perfect. It matters not that you are not a preacher or a public worker in God's service. You are fa failing God if you make your business, your whole household concerns, your family concerns, the things of your life more important than the spiritual conflict for Him. Considering things necessary for our three lives, our Lord deliberately says, Seek you first the kingdom of Lord God and His righteousness, 
and then all these things what the pagans work or what the things they do even we read in Ecclesiastes when he says the other labor and you will get their fruit because it has been prepared and then he says what is first in our souls yes read out the man who has written this topic and he says long back for us what are your interests seeking the kingdom of Lord God are you interested to look the businesses of your affairs the businesses of our affairs Revelation 22 12 remember it is the rewards of him because it is the work of him we are doing and if you're not performing fully what is the work then we need to be aware or cautious and to understand if all things have been made for him and for his glory and we are in his care why we worry about the world why we worry about the details of this earth why we seek and search the things that are not at all worth on this earth Let's seek and search what is truth, what is perfect, what is correct. That which is good and perfect and acceptable in the sight of the Lord our God. And do what Lord God the Father in heaven demands through our lives. Because he says for us in Psalms chapter 33, The counsel of the Lord our God abideth forever. And on the other hand he says, Our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. And that will be our prayer and that will be our power in performing his will because we have our complete trust in his holy name and thus he says he is holy so we ought to be holy let's sanctify ourselves and put number one priority to the work of the lord of our god and nothing else than that on this earth because time is short and choosing false gods or new gods where do you want to destroy your life if there were no weapon among forty thousand men can we pray and say lord we are having our disciples our disciple is a weapon now and how you can have your disciple provided when you're having unselfish motives to teach the word of truth rather than gaining your material standards to prove that you are into new terms of doctrine and not knowing the newness of life in the power of lord god the holy spirit penned and kept for us from eternity past the old way of life which is always the same the consistent way of life that is to come to learn the word of the lord of our god every day and to become disciples from becoming disciples growing up to become grammatias and in return making disciples of all the nations dear brethren think over these issues don't waste your time we shall come back and continue tomorrow as lord god the holy spirit will lead us not even to let go even a single jot or tittle but as a software, as a scribe, let's take what is exactly and what is accurately needed for us, the prescribed portion for our souls, which is necessarily binding upon us to be the only ordinances by which we could live. Therefore, he says for us, the psalmist again, I have come, O Lord, kneeling down in the presence, make me thy disciple, Lamad, and teach me the necessary things prescribed by you the word of the Lord choke the word is very important not statutes as we can have statute is also meant to say mitzah or Torah but here it meant to say choke or kukha which is nothing but the demands of Bible doctrine and we need to meet that demands of Bible doctrine not what we think we are demanding or not what we think we are able to perform only the true word of the Lord of our God to be performed every day in our life Think about this issue, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine sphere of Lord God the Father, helping us to enlighten the word of the Lord of God through the process of crematizovine exegesis, so that we shall not be saying to the point to plead our ignorance and arrogance, but rather we would be, Lord, I have learned the doctrine. Strengthen me to fight your battles in this church age. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple, believing Christ we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Sathan Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because the Dharma to my witnesses for it have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in the Trinity followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry besides nature, the entire and very costly by witnesses. 
And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren? You decide. And we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlightens us through His Word. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us, O Lord, to know how many people have really chosen new gods for them as in the terms of new doctrines. They have been taught as for the fear of men, O Lord, the precepts of men, and not the precepts of Lord God. So, Father, yet among that 40,000 children of Israel, there were no weapons seen, says Deborah in her song. At Lord, you have so many people to be Christians on this earth. Though they are nominal, yet knowing grown up to be as disciple Christians, Father, if we could find in this present Christendom reality, Lord, have you found any weapons, O Lord, that we have prepared to be thy disciples, so that we could cherish and nourish and entrust in us in thy deepest riches, O Lord? So, Father, we are not really worth enough, yet, O Lord, you have given us this grace and life to enjoy the truth. Help us, Father, to live in their testimonies as a true testimony and to cherish and nourish in their testimonies more than the riches of this world, what the world is thinking they have that riches. Help us, Father, at the same time to train up the pastor teachers as well to look upon proper exegeomai of their truth and once again re-establish and make the number one priority to train them up to become grammatias and in return make disciples of all the nations. And those are international Lord. Give them this great grace to understand the word, though the recording may seem for them in, an, in any other manner what they think. It's not the man, it's the message. Help them to understand this, Father, because in your hand you have the wages of everyone, which are the wages of you for the work for which we have been kept from the time of our birth, coming from saving grace till to the point of living ultra super grace and dying grace. It's only you, Lord. Help us, Father, for the before the foundation of the world which are made for us to do their work as a workmanship to walk in that work and produce for you for your glory. And see if there is an offense in us, O Lord, such as diligently lead us in the way of everlasting truth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name, we pray, sovereign Lord, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message.